We've looked at how the ETCS track side transmits gradient information to the ETCS onboard. We're now going to have a look at speed profiles. The different types of trains may be able to travel at different speeds along the track. So how is the track side to send this information? Well, for each segment or section of the track, track side can send a range of different speeds, each one tagged to one of a number of characteristics of the train. There are around about 30 in total. Every time a speed changes, then you need to have a new segment. And in a similar way to the ETCS onboard, at selecting the using the gradient information, it will use that speed profile. So how will it select the speed? Well, it'll use the data that has been provided by the maintainer or has come from the train driver's input at the start of mission. That configuration data will enable it to select the correct profile. If more than one profile could apply, then the most restrictive is the one that the ETCS will display to the driver and apply for its supervision. So we mentioned that speed profile has to be split into segments. Each segment starts at a distance from the LRBG, if it's the first segment, or the start of the preceding segment. For the whole of the speed profile, there must be at least a basic speed. There must be no gaps in the list of speeds. So what type of speed can be provided? Well, we always have to have a basic speed. We can provide a speed related to the count efficiency the train can tolerate, a speed related to the train category, or a restricted speed based on the axle load. The basic speed is called V-static, and it's transmitted as a multiple of 5 km per hour. All speeds in ETCS are transmitted either from the track side to the onboard or vice versa in multiples of 5 km per hour. Now, I'm sure you've all driven round a corner and felt the force pushing you out against the outside of the curve. Trains experience exactly the same phenomena. Some trains are better at working on when they have a higher force pushing them out and are therefore able to operate at higher speeds and curves. How stable the train is, and whether the coffee slides around, is the camp deficiency that the train can tolerate. It is all about how safe and comfortable a curve can be taken. So cant, what is it? Well, on a curve, we raise the outer rail above the inner rail by a short, a small distance measured in millimetres. As the train goes round the corner, that higher rail means that the train will lean in slightly and that will counteract the force pushing you out and the gravity that you feel as a passenger on the train will start to point away from the centre of the curve slightly. There is an equilibrium speed for any particular corner and its applied cant, and that's when that gravity force feels like it is still going straight down through the wheels, even though you're going round a corner. And if you go faster, then you end up with a cant deficiency. And that is measured in how much further the outer rail would need to be raised to get back to equilibrium. ETCS allows speed profiles to be categorised for trains with cant able to cope with a cant efficiency of 80 millimetres, 100 millimetres, all the way up to tilting trains with 300 millimetres. Train categories. There are three train categories defined. Passenger trains. Freight with passenger timings, freight with goods timings. Now, if you think back to old freight trains, they used to have lots of wagons coupled together loosely with chains and hooks. And when they started, they'd make a big clatter as the train slowly started moving at the front and the wagons towards the back caught up. Similarly, when the brakes are applied, they take time for the brake force to work its way down the train. And so the front of the train will start to slow before the back. And again, wagons will catch each other up. By adjusting how quickly the air is allowed into the brake pipe, you, then the performance of the brakes down the train can be managed to avoid the noise, the clatter and the potential for buffer lock. 
and that is what the two timings reflect. Heavy drains may be a, uh, cause more damage to the infrastructure. Weak bridges may not like trains going over them at high speeds. So we often apply speed restrictions to the heaviest trains. Whilst it's unlikely a bridge will collapse if the train goes too fast, it will certainly cause the infrastructure to deteriorate and reduce its life. Axle load restrictions are applied as a distance from the LRBG or the start of the previous axle coat load restriction and a length. So they can actually be a discontinuous restriction just to reflect where bridges or other locations are. There are a range of axle load ca categories defined. These are defined as part of the infrastructure and rolling stock TSIs. And they range from the lightest through to the heaviest vehicles. There is a slight flaw in the list in that sometimes a vehicle in one category further down the list is actually less damaging than one higher up the list. It's not a perfect order, but it can be used to control access and speed over weak structures. So what else can be sent as part of the speed profiles? Well, speeds can be set to apply just to the front of the train or until the whole train has left that segment. For instance, if you have a level crossing and you want the speed to be restricted so the driver can check the level crossing is clear, once they have reached the level crossing, the train could accelerate. However, if you had a weak bridge, you wouldn't want the train to accelerate until the whole train had passed over it. You can also set the train category speeds to override the deficiency speeds. This can be used for in certain circumstances to, to make sure that different types of trains don't go faster than you desire because they are able to tolerate a high account efficiency. And the speed profile can be defined to stop at the end of the last segment or to continue forever. So we've looked at how the information can be transmitted. How does the onboard take all these potentially 30 odd speed profiles and compile a speed profile to display to the driver and to supervise the movement?